But I'm about to say might be kind of mentally jarring to those of you who have a specific idea of what or who God is. So if you don't want to go in and question that, then this might not be the video for you. Um, the things I say might make no sense experientially. And I am talking from a place of my interpretation of my direct experience. These are not things I say because I've just decided to believe them. So today I have this kind of idea of seeing God in a different light because in spirituality and with religious people, there's kind of this cognitive dissonance that goes on, you know, They're like God loves you and wants the best for you. And he's never going to give you more than you can handle. And then that creates dissonance in our mind, because in the back of our mind, we know that fucking suicide happens. We know that drug addiction to suicide happens. We know that like all this awful shit happens. And so our brain is trying to process like how all this evil shit can happen when God wants the best for us, right? And so the typical thing is like free will. And I'm kind of, I'm on board with like free will, right? But the idea I came to today is that the point of all of this is to experience. It's not to build up our character, right? Because, I'm sorry, Daddy, if everyone got what they wanted all the time, if everyone can't be like the best singer, right? There can only be one. You know, both football teams can't win. So if you have one person praying on this side for this football team, the other person praying, there's a logical contradiction. And so maybe the point isn't to have this certainty that God has your back. But what if, and this is kind of weird, right? Because I've had these moments where I feel, I feel that urge to watch porn. And all of a sudden, it's like this wave of unconditional love just comes over me. And when that happened before, I was like, of course you're here. Of course. And that kind of relationship, in that moment, there's an experience like God is something separate from me and he's helping me right now. But in reality, I could have just been experiencing that love because that love I was feeling is a consequence of me putting time into revealing my true nature, the meditation, the breath work, the ice, everything. And so it's easy for me to egotistically think that, oh, God's got my back and he wants the best for me. And it's like the other day when I said, if I'm clinging on to the story that I'm here to build the kingdom of God and to spread love, I can't just relax. I can't take a breath. I'm going to be forcing. I'm going to be projecting onto others because I'm pushing this narrative onto them. I'm not being myself. And so it's like, so ironic because on one hand you have people like me who can sit underneath a tree and just bawl their eyes out because of how much love they feel and how beautiful this life is but on the other hand there's someone who doesn't have any experience of god that they're aware of and they just feel so lost and so separate and they kill themselves so it's like how can we live in the same reality when you have one person who's like, wow, this is totally real. Like, how is it not? How could I ever think that God didn't exist when it's that obvious? So this kind of gets to the problem of evil, right? This is what I was talking about earlier. The problem of evil makes a lot more sense when you stop looking at God as having your back. And when you start to realize that you are God experiencing itself through the limitations of this character, the limited framework. Because now you see that when you're at everything, everywhere, all at once, no time, you're just every potential existing simultaneously. There's no storyline. There's no up and down. There's no left and right. There's nowhere to get, no one to become. So that's the I am state. That's eternity. When you know that you are the only being in existence and that nothing can threaten you, 
you would want to restrict yourself of your true nature so that way you can have an experience. And so while I was at the park, I was like, okay, everything's neutral. Nothing's like inherently meaningful. And it's just God experiencing itself through many different ways. Then what if, like, that? can I not enjoy anything? I threw my friend's dog, his dog toy, into the branch. And then we just spent like 20 minutes trying to get it out with another ball. And then we smelled this amazing scent from the, the trees around us. And it was just so nice. And then we saw an owl up above. And we heard the cool sounds it made. And we had this cute little doggo that was just jumping in our lap and nibbling at us. And it was so adorable. And all of those experiences aren't possible when you're everything, everywhere, all at once. Right? So this is the price that we have to pay for, like, having an experience, basically. We have to forget that we're God. Forget that we're eternal. Forget that we're something that can't be killed. Because when we have that perception that we're this individual separate being, then... We, we, all the illusion of life is there, right? We think this is what gives us meaning, this job. We think me being able to do this boosts my value up. And if I can't do it anymore, then my value's down. But when you have the knowledge of God, the direct experience of God within you, you know that your value is the same no matter what you do. You are love. It's not something you have to try to do. You are that. Your value doesn't go up and down. So it's like, there's just too many things that make sense about this way of viewing God to me. Yeah. It's, it's an amazing thing. The price we pay for forgetting where God is experience. There's so many cool things to experience. And so with life coaching, with anything, my goal isn't to give you the certainty, to tell you that you're going to become more valuable whenever you do all these things. I will treat you with love right now because it's my nature. Why would I do anything different? Projecting that you need to be something more than you are right now isn't going to do shit. Religious people have done that forever. And that's how religious trauma happens. You're going to hell. You got to accept this. And the people that are saying that are in their own personal hell right now because they think they're separate from God. That love is something to be earned through accepting Jesus and not by recognizing the divinity within yourself. And so, I, I don't, I lost my train of thought. Um, that's right, life coaching. My goal is to equip you with the tools that no matter what happens in your life, you have the peace of eternity with you. And you carry that with you. Because I don't know what's best for you. I don't know how to teach everything. That's not what I meant to say. Um, I, I just lost my train of thought. I don't have the certainty to know where you're going to end up in life. And I'm not going to pretend to say that if you follow these steps, you'll end up in this place. Because life's random. I don't know everything. But I can show you the tools to take the peace of I am with you wherever you go. So, I don't know how to end this, but life's so cool. It can be so cool. We're really here. We're really existing. It's just wild. <laughs> yeah, 
Fencing.